Hey, happy whatever day this is. It's uh, episode number, what, 15 of the Brian and Ryan uh, podcast. And for you five folks that keep watching every week, thank you. Uh, How you doing, sir? I'm great. How are you? Uh, I'm great. I uh, spent three hours of my life, again, wasted watching a a terrible Dallas Cowboys team prove once again just how really bad they are. And uh, that was uh, on a Tuesday night. It's, it's it's COVID, man. I mean, it's just the perfect storm. They go out and they get hammered by the uh, Ravens 34-17. And the only thing you can say about it is that anybody that's stupid enough – hello there – anybody that's stupid enough to say that uh, they still have a chance in the NFC East, please stop. Please, please don't make a fool out of yourself. Yeah, and it was interesting. Uh, whenever Troy Aikman calls the Cowboys game – it's always funny, but wow. Troy, you could tell Troy was fed up. Um, <laughs> as I know, you know, Cowboy fans are. Um, but he, I think even for him, it was it's getting to be a bit much. And you know, you're talking about stop saying that they have a chance in this division. All of a sudden, I mean, w- Washington and the Giants appear headed in the right direction. I mean, they're not great teams, but I mean, Washington goes and wins in Pittsburgh and. You know, you're seeing these other teams outside of Philadelphia, which is a complete dumpster fire. Um, but you're seeing these teams at least getting better, showing some signs, which I, I think is what Cowboy fans would have wanted by this point. And, uh, I mean, the defense gave up, what, nearly 300 yards rushing. Again. Um, and, you know, what's funny about that game, though, Brian, the offensive line played pretty well. No, they did. The offense played pretty well. Yeah, and but it's – it's it's but it, then it's something else. Uh, I mean, they can't they can't stop the run. Um, there was a, a turnover that really kind of killed the momentum of the game again. And then at kicker, you missed three field goals. So it's always something with this team. They can never put it all together. And just another long, frustrating night. The uh, two things that were the most frustrating for me were the first touchdown – that the Ravens scored when they faked a jet sweep and Leighton Vander Esch <laughs> ran almost to the sideline following the running back yeah, and left a hole here. about as big as the Grand Canyon right up the middle for Lamar Jackson to take it in from about 40 yards out untouched. Yeah, there was no one there. And, and I just thought, how many times have we seen that this year? where somebody was so ridiculously out of position. And this has been going on now. Cowboys are, what, 3-10 and ten now? 3-9, and nine, I think. 3-9? and nine? It, it all seems the same. <laughs> uh, but, you know, at what point do you start showing any kind of um, idea that you know what you're doing? I mean, and, and you've got to put that on the coaches uh, because this just keeps happening week after week after week. Um, that one bothered me a lot. The other one that bothered me a lot was on the, the missed field goal that I think was a 45 yarder and they take a delay of game penalty Yes. and back it up five yards and Zerline misses it. And I was wanting to know exactly what was Mike McCarthy doing at that point where he should have been calling one of the three timeouts they had left at the half to keep that clock from getting away from them. That's just inexcusable. Yeah, that was a huge mistake. Um, cost him three points. And it, it, just, it just goes back to the discipline. There's always just something you're, you're like, what? I mean, we're 12 games in. Uh, at what point are you guys going to figure this stuff out? Um, I, look, I, I don't know. And Troy Aikman uh, referred – talked about it last night that there's just so many issues like anyone that just thinks well it's because Dak's out there's far more concerns with this team other than just Dak oh yeah Uh, because Dak's not going to come back and solve all these issues now they are yes they're obviously better with Dak at quarterback but this team because I, I feel like I guess the fear is do you do you think that Jerry Jones thinks it's just a matter of having Dak back or do you think they truly understand, like, there are way more issues going into next year. And you've got guys, and we've talked about them all season, like Zeke making huge money. Um, 
Jalen Smith continues to unimpress me with for what he's making. Um, there's so many guys making they gave big money to that to me are not living up to their contracts. Uh, Zach Martin's out for the rest of this season, injured. Is Tyron Smith ever going to be able to come back and play at the level? I mean, there's so many issues. I mean, what where what is the future of this team even with that? The problem you got is, first of all, you asked if Jerry Jones realizes it, and I, I have no idea. I don't even want to go into his brain because that's the scariest yeah. place on the earth. Um, <laughs> who knows what he's thinking? Uh, the, the, thing, the good news is, as I said before, when you have a season like this go as horribly wrong as this season has gone, then you can't delude yourself into thinking this was some kind of aberration. You suck. You absolutely suck. Okay. There's no way to hide that. There's no way to keep, put that lipstick on that pig and make it look better. They are horrible. The main thing I say is that they are, they are so horrible personnel wise on defense that I don't know that you could keep more than three or four of these guys and just cut the rest and just draft and put rookies out on the field. I mean, where, where was DeMarcus Lawrence last night? Well, I, 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 yeah, that, I mean, that's the thing, because, like, and I don't know what the, the cap ramifications are with some of these big contracts. But, yeah, I mean, there, you, you really need to feel, – it feels like blow it up. Well, it, it it's going to get blown up. It has to be. And, it, and, the, and the other thing I'll ask you, is there any way – is there any way that Mike McCarthy can bring Mike Nolan back next year? No. To me, not if he wants to keep his job. I, I don't see how you can. Um, I, mean, I mean, you're putting together one of the worst. I mean, this isn't like just a down year. This is like one of the worst, maybe the worst defense in franchise history. Mm -hmm. Bad. Um, yeah, you cannot. And the sad thing is in all this, the division was so bad that for you to still be in last place in the worst division, I think kind of sh shows what you said. You can't delude yourself to think, oh, there's just one thing. There are so many issues with this team. Okay, um, let, me, let me throw one other thing out there, too. The, uh, just by mere comparison, okay, we're watching three teams in the division that are in the same boat, brand-new coaching staffs, all three of them with quarterback issues right now, okay? But we've watched steady improvement by the, by the Washington team and by the Giants going into Seattle and beating the Seahawks. We, we see Washington and the Giants playing really good defense. And I'm yeah. going to tell you what, Washington's defense, they got first rounders at every position on the front line. Their front they, seven is a load. Dude, they, these guys are going to be around for a long time. And they're playing with Alex Smith, who, you know, <laughs> two years ago, you thought he might die on the operation table. Yeah, I mean, at least was going to lose a leg. Yeah. And, and he comes in, and he, you know, he played solid the other night. I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, they're playing good complementary football, but they don't have a star at quarterback. The Giants don't have a star at quarterback. Uh, Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy <laughs> comes in, and not only that, but Saquon Barkley's been out all year long, and Wayne Gallman comes in, and he looks like an all-pro. And we're sitting yeah. there paying this kind of money to Zeke Elliott to go out there and, and average less than four yards a carry. And Wayne freaking Gallman, who's like a fourth-round pick out of Clemson, he's a talented back, but it proves you can get good backs, Derrick Henry. Not in yeah. the first round. You don't have to pay these guys that much money. No, I think you made a good point about, I mean, you're seeing these other teams improve. And, I mean, they don't have star quarterbacks, and yet they continue outside of Philly. Uh, but the Giants and Washington, they're playing hard. They're playing good defense. They don't make stupid mistakes. And now it's like they're, they're starting to get things figured out offensively. And they're a tough out. But that's the thing. Even if they don't win, teams don't want to play them each week because you're in for a dogfight. Because Washington's defense, I mean, they're a handful. Uh, for them to go into Pittsburgh and beat them, uh, I mean, that was impressive. And then you got the Giants winning in Seattle. I mean, two of the tougher teams to beat. So watching what those teams are doing makes the Cowboys situation even more – you just put your hands up in the air. 
And then you throw one other thing into this, the, the fact that uh, Washington, I think, has already lost two games to the Giants. So they've lost the tiebreaker. Okay, do you know what that means? That means Jason Garrett, the <laughs> offensive coordinator for the, for the New York Giants, is probably going to be in a playoffs this year while the Cowboys and Mike McCarthy are sitting there, you know, watching from home. Man, wouldn't that be <laughs> – wouldn't that be something uh, – I, I still – it's going to be interesting to see which one. Like, I really don't know which team I would pick. I, the Giants, like you said, have the tiebreaker right now. Um, I like the way Washington's playing, though. Um, I have to look at their schedules to see who I think – how many wins I think they have left. We, I think you and I had even said several weeks ago six wins we thought could win the division. They're both at five and seven right now. Yeah. Maybe it'll take seven wins to actually win that division. But the Cowboys ain't going to be anywhere near that. So, no. I think the biggest drama last night was that Des Bryant didn't get to play, and he finds out right before kickoff 2020, man. Hey, hey, you tested positive for COVID. Sorry. And it's nice to see he's still just as emotionally stable as he's always been because immediately after he got sent out of the stadium, he's tweeting out there, okay, I'm out for the year. You know, I'm going, hey. Actually, I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame him. I'd be, I'd be done with it too. Um and then, but and it was just, and I don't, we don't need to go off the rails with this, but <laughs> then everyone that he's hugging before the game, yes. they're all fine. You guys can stay. So I, I don't, I don't know the rules. Okay, let's take it from one end. Hey, unless you got something else you want to talk about from the uh, from the standpoint of the NFL. No, not really. Um, I wanted to move on to the college football because uh, yeah. COVID is really starting to jack this last part of the season up ohio yeah. state can't play michigan this weekend uh the big 10 as we are recording is trying to fit you know they made the rule that you had to play at least six games to be eligible they for, the, for the conference championship and now they're probably going to change that so they can make sure ohio state can get into the championship game if i was indiana i'd be a little bit ticked off about that but yeah just saying um they need the conference needs the money. They need to have a team in the playoffs. So that's one of the things, but it still makes me mad because the big 10 set themselves up for this failure and this disaster. And then they're going to get away with it. That makes and the me thing mad. that the thing that, so throughout this whole thing, you know, I've thought, okay, Ohio state probably is one of the four best teams, but I'm starting to have a real issue as more games get canceled. Cause if Ohio state, I mean, how many more games are they going to play? Because right now they've played what? five games, and you're going to put them in a playoff. So they're going to be six and zero maybe, and you're putting them in a playoff. I don't. There, there is nothing fair about that to the other conferences. Um, even, I mean, from teams in the SEC, even to like someone like Iowa State that's played ten games. And I'm not thrilled that Iowa State has a loss to Louisiana and they're up there. But I don't understand how you can play five games and be in the playoff picture and i get it's about the four best teams but at some point well, you have to have a body of work can i can i just say if i was a&m right now i'd be pretty tick, ticked off because i got yeah. i've got eight games in eight and one okay yeah. um and yeah the one was a boat race that alabama just kicked them all over the field but if ohio state can't play a&m's the fourth team they're the one team on the outside looking in right now now, all this could still sort itself out in the championship games, but if you're A&M and you've played nine games going, possibly will have a chance to play ten ball games by the time the season's over, and Ohio State's only played five to six games, that, first of all, that's four ball games less chance of getting people banged up and hurt. That's going to be a much fresher football team Ohio State is than A&M or Alabama oh, or Clemson or Notre Dame, any of them. Um, yeah. I, I just think that I, I, I have a real problem with the fact that Ohio State was able to, to maneuver and uh, manipulate this to a point that they could play half the games that the other teams have. They've braved it and gutted it out and gotten through this season, and Ohio State didn't even want to do that, and yet they're going to be rewarded for this by getting a playoff berth. Um, I was trying to see why, um, because I had saw, because the Cincinnati game, their, their game with Tulsa got right. postponed, or got canceled. Now they're just going to the championship game. But 
Um, I didn't know if the COVID issues were from Cincinnati's end or Tulsa's end. Because, Tulsa. Okay, so then one question I have, why can't Cincinnati and Ohio State play this week? Because. They're both open. That, it's because the Big Ten has this arrogance that we won't <laughs> schedule anyone outside of the league. That is such a great solution. I mean, it's perfect. It gives Cincinnati a chance to say, hey, we belong and they could move up. And Ohio State, a legit opponent. I, I don't understand. It's if we're going to do this, why not try to do what we can to make it work? It's because rules are not supposed to be broken. Unless, of course, you want to change the rule that says you right. only so have to have five system. games to get into the championship game. See what I mean? It's crooked. <laughs> and, and geographically, even, you can't say, well, it doesn't work. Cincinnati and Ohio State, they're very – it would be as close as any Big Ten game. And, and, uh, it doesn't make sense. And don't tell me – it can't be done after we watched BYU and Coastal Carolina throw a game together that was probably one of the most entertaining games we're going to see all year long, and they pull that together on a Thursday to play on yes. Saturday. Don't tell me it can't be done. And, and yeah, and some Ohio State can't get that figured out with, this, with an in-state school that quick with this much on the line. And like you said – so you have one rule that, no, we can't change, but this other rule, we will. Uh, it, it just makes me despise the Big Ten more every time I think about it, okay? Because, again, the other, the other three power conferences all have tried to make this thing happen, and they have moved heaven and earth to get games in, okay? And, and have done an amazing job of playing ball games. And they're going to have legitimate champions, championship games, legitimate right. championship games. You know, Florida, Alabama, in any year, playing the way they're playing, that's a legit championship game. The Oklahoma-Iowa State matchup, that is a legit champ. Those teams earned that right. Even, by, even with all the lo lost games and the, the shuffling and all that, those guys gutted through all that and the stress of that and made it happen, and it worked. And, and, you know, and so God bless them. And Notre Dame Clemson, you know, they've managed to get it through it. So I just, I'm just sorry. I don't, I don't see why uh, it's the Big Ten birthright to get special favoritism in this situation. I just don't think it's right. That's just me. Um, yeah. But again, it, money, follow the money is always the, the, the deal there. Tom Herman. Tom Herman. Uh, of course, does what Tom Herman always does. When his butt's on the hottest of hot seats, that's when his team will rise up and actually beat somebody soundly. You know, it's always when they're an underdog, they always manage to play down to whatever the situation is that they're in. They had to play well there. Is there any reason to, to think that because they beat Kansas State the way they beat them this past week, that Tom Herman should be retained at Texas? Not because of that. And, you know, look, Kansas State is not – they are not good. Since their 4-0 start, they've lost out. They're not the same team without Skylar Thompson. That, to me, was not an impressive win. Um, and I, I had predicted K-State would lose that game handily. So that one game, no. If Because my thing is – and all the reports going into that game were that the Texas higher-ups were done with them. So nothing in that game should have – if that's true – Nothing from that game should change any minds whatsoever. Um, the the biggest thing, which I'm just like, can you screw this thing up anymore? Is there were all these leaks, and by legitimate legitimate reporters about um, Urban Meyer, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they're 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 out on Urban Meyer. Like, See, how do you how do you say that? And then all of a sudden, no, we're out. Well, Urban Meyer said he was out. That's okay, I, I had I had read that the. the and maybe that they're saving face that no, the Texas people were out on him. He pulled out on that. And, and, okay. see, and here's what I think, a couple of things. Number one, I'm not an Urban Meyer fan. He's a great coach. And he's won three ch national championships in three different places. Okay. I mean, the guys well, – I actually, Florida, he won two and he won one at Ohio State, but he also won the conference championship at Utah. Great coach, okay? But I think, I think Urban Meyer's ego likes being able to float his name out to things like that and flirt and then at the last second go, oh, well, my health's not good, that great. But, boy, it sure did feel good to get courted for a while. And so, there's no love loss between him and Herman either. No. So, so he's, he got his, he got his ego stroked. He still knows he's, 
he still knows he's got the, the it factor and he can be desired by programs all over the country. Okay. In the, in the meantime, I don't know how you keep Herman now when it was so public that yeah, you I sit there, you went out on a, you went out on a prom date while you were still married. Yeah. Okay. And, and everybody knows it. And so what does that say for your recruiting? What does that say for – it says you you don't think Tom Herman's the guy because you wouldn't have been dancing with the other girl if you thought that, okay? So they've sent a very clear message that they're done with Tom Herman. The question now is who's, who wants that job? Uh, if it was me and I had the opportunity, if I was going to throw money at somebody, I'd say go get Matt Campbell, the guy at Iowa mm-hmm. State. Although I don't know why Matt Campbell would want that crappy job. Um, and, and, you know, at the same time, I think that he's more of a Northern guy. I could see him being the next Michigan coach. Although yeah. I don't, I don't think he's, he, he's got access to as many athletes at Michigan as he would ha- have at, uh, at Texas. Uh, but who wants to get into that rat's nest when you've got all these big money fat cats that think just because they throw their wallet on the table, they ought to have, you know, be a national championship contender every year. That's just the, the history tells you something completely different than the myth no and yeah and again and i've said i you could argue that the 10-year window with mac brown where they won 10 games that 10-year window that was the outlier um the rest of texas the last 30 40 years has just been very average Mm -hmm. uh football but um matt campbell is the only one that I mean, sure, you, you have to have other candidates. I'd have to go back through and think, but he, he's the, you know, the young guy. But I, I just don't know if he would fit with Texas. Um, I don't know. And, who, who would fit with Texas, though, when you're into Well, that? But the other thing, because, you know, guys like Matt Campbell, they get the most out of two, three-star guys. It's a whole different animal to then go to where you're going to get – you can get four and five-star. Can you coach those guys up to play as hard as you're getting those younger guys? Um, and maybe he can, but uh, I would even argue going into this year, I, I had thought Matt Campbell was a little overrated. I mean, honestly, because Iowa State, it was always supposed to take that next step, and I always felt like they'd lose a game that I was like, how did they lose that game? And even this year, they started lo- they lost to Louisiana, and I was like, well, there we go again, and then they ended up having a little run here, but they've still lost two games this year, so I don't know. Um, my thing is when you th- – the problem is when you the, – and look, these reports weren't just coming out of thin air. Oh. When you throw out the Urban Meyer thing, you better get him because anything less than him now is, to me, a huge letdown. And, and like you said, wh- how do you even know Matt Campbell even wants to be a part of that mess? It's, it's, a, it's a nightmare scenario for Texas. Uh, I laugh at it, and, and I laugh at it even more because – um, I have to I have to say it as much as I don't like to say it. I have to say that uh, Texas A&M is a legitimately good football team. I don't think they're a great football team, but uh, that football team that beat Auburn last weekend looked impressive. They looked impressive on both the offensive and defensive lines. They are physical. They are fast. They are a really good run team. And as long as they don't ask Kellen Mond to be the uh, the guy that wins the game for them. I think that they're a very good football team that can beat most teams in this country. Uh, and that must really drive Texas crazy to see that happening at A&M. Uh, that, that's what you get for 75 mil. I mean, after all, you know. Uh. <laughs> it was funny, early in the year we had talked about who was in, I remember we had brought it up on here, who was in more hot water or who was more overrated, Jimbo or Herman. And Jimbo's ended up having a good year in May. Could still get his team in the playoffs, so um, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what happens. But it, I mean, I, I just think it, I I can only like shake my head. It was all this Urban Meyer stuff comes out, and then over the weekend after the game, all of a sudden he's he's out, and I'm like, you cannot you cannot do that. Like it is just to me, it just looks bad. And now like you, I don't see how you can bring Herman back. No, I, it's, I mean, he can't. You can't because you've undermined him so much. I mean, it's not like I'm a big Urban Meyer guy anyway. I think his teams have terribly underperformed. He's getting, he's getting worse recruiting every year. 
Um, you know, to, to lose the kid to South, from South Lake Carroll, the quarterback, I've already ranted about that before. You can't do that. Uh, but, to, but to see that, the one other thing I want to talk about real quickly, I mean, Texas, I just – I think they've got to move on from, from Herman. Um, this is a personal one, but LSU, once again, has got another player that's threatening to opt out. It's a five-star tight end, Eric Gilbert, who this week, after they got destroyed – by Alabama, uh, comes in Monday and tells Orgeron that he's uh, homesick. He's from Georgia. He's homesick. His, his body hurts. He thinks he wants to shut it down. Okay. He, he told Orgeron he is, his body hurt and, and he was ready to shut it down, uh, opt out for the season. Okay. Then later on, he said he's homesick and he's considering transferring. So there's two different stories out there. But my question, first of all, and I heard Rick Neuheisel talking about this, and he used the word quit. And uh, he said that, you know, what, at what point, he said, we're at a slippery slope in college football now where kids um, no longer have to finish. It yeah. used to be you and I were taught that you, you finish what you start, that your teammates matter. And we talked about this before. And again, COVID has been a stressful situation for everybody. And, you know, if the kid is having problems, then and they've set it up where, you know, he's got the right to, to pull out. But, but college football is getting ready to change forever with the transfer portal giving you a free transfer one time without having to sit out. And now you can just walk away in the middle of a season when the season's getting away from you. Kirk Herbstreet making the, the comment last week that he thought some teams were opting out just because the seasons were, were lost and now they're just, they don't want to go out and play and get embarrassed. I'm very disturbed at what's happening to my sport. Yeah, no, I think it's a real issue. Um, and one of the bigger things I've seen, because it's even happened um, at Kansas State, who uh, I follow a lot, They've had multiple transfers. And what you're seeing a lot also is if someone doesn't win a starting job, if they're not getting the playing time they want, they're just in, entering the transfer portal mid-season. Um, and my, my concern is uh, – and like the, the funny thing is if you ever question a student athlete, everyone throws at you, uh, they're, they're, you know, they don't get paid and all this stuff. Cry me a river. I don't want to hear that right now. Uh, they, they, get, they get so much handed to them on a platter – they're getting a huge education. And I don't even have a problem with players getting compensated. So I'm not going to get into that argument. But we are seeing a culture of mentally soft athletes that when I, man, and I, I look, I, feel, I just turned 40 and now I feel like the old guy because this never would have flown back when I was in high school and college. Five um, years ago, it wouldn't have flown. Yeah. And, and, and I feel like being the old guy, get off my lawn. But there, there's something to say for being there for your brothers, and I'm not going to quit midseason. Now, if at the end of the year you want to move on, um, you know, you got to make the best decision for you. But doing it – because let, let's be honest, it's quitting when you're doing this after a big loss and you guys don't have a championship, you know, any championship aspirations. Got, but guys are also doing it for other reasons. They're doing it because they're not getting the playing time. Like, guys don't want to compete. They want everything given to them. And if it's not given to them immediately, we have no patience for anything anymore. Well, uh, and, and I want to hold, I don't want to hold just the kids responsible because I guarantee you there is a circle of influence around them that is in their ears constantly. Agents saying, you're, you know, right now, you know, if you, if you opt out now, your value won't drop anymore. You know, it's like Daryl Stingley Jr. got burned by Devontae Adams a few times against Alabama. You know, well, there could, if he was eligible to go to the draft, there'd be somebody in his ear saying, you're going to lose value if you don't opt out. You need to get out yeah. of there and get ready for the draft. There's parents telling them, yeah, you're not getting playing time. You, you know you're better than that person. Instead of saying, stick it out, fight through it, compete, you've got parents now telling their kids, ah, you, you need to go transfer someplace where you're going to get more playing time. I mean, you go, you go to any youth league game and watch how parents behave now. It's not about gutting it out and being a good teammate and doing the best you can and persevering and getting through uh, tough times. It's about my baby needs to play. You know, how's my baby not playing? 
And the funny thing is in many cases, and I wish uh, it would take forever to get the data, but how many of these kids that transfer actually go on and do anything at the next school? Because I think the numbers are, would be pretty small because so many of these guys that you see transfer now, you know, the, a five-star stud, maybe that's one thing. Justin Fields. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that quarterbacks are different, but I'm talking about guys like freshman year. They're not getting the time. I mean, cause I, I end up seeing guys uh, that transfer like three or four times. And it's like, because I see this in college basketball all the time with the transfer changes now where they're basically, you can just transfer now and not have to sit out. It's free agency. So if they're not happy after one year, they transfer. Guess what? It's not going to work out there either because you want everything given to you. They transfer again. You're seeing guys playing on three or four schools in, in a four year career. So yeah, it's a culture thing. And uh, I don't like where it's headed either. Cause I think, um, I think we're going to start, it, it's, it's going to be the wild west, but kids aren't getting, getting better out of this. They're, they're not mentally tough. They're quitting at the first obstacle. Um, and yeah, it's not good. I'm not crazy about it either. <sighs> I'm depressed. <laughs> I think it's time to go now. <laughs> Let's end on a low note. Uh, <laughs> we, we look forward to, Hey, we look forward to two things. Cowboys Bengals without Joe Burrow this weekend. And oh, then the, cool. then the other good news of the day, and we'll close on this one is the Sunday night game that was supposed to be the Cowboys in San Francisco has now been bumped to noon because it's such a big ball game. You know it's 2020 when they're taking the Cowboys out of Sunday night football. Bumped for a Cleveland Browns game. Browns Giants. <laughs> Browns Giants. I mean, boy, you know you have hit rock bottom when it's the Cowboys, the ultimate ratings king, getting bumped to noon for a Cleveland Browns game. <laughs> Could you have imagined at the beginning of the season, you told someone, hey, we're going to end up bumping Cowboys against the defending NFC champs yeah. for Browns Giants. <laughs> Unbelievable. Or, or the fact that the, uh, the Steelers, uh, the Ravens Steelers game had to be played early afternoon because you didn't want to, we already had the, uh, the Christmas tree lighting Christmas at Rockefeller tree Center, lighting. you know, that we had to run on NBC. It's been that kind of year and I'm really ready for 2020 to go away. We've only got a few more weeks. <laughs> and then it just continues. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else before we go? No, sir. Let's end it on that. <laughs> Bring that vaccine on quick. I'll take it in my neck. <laughs> All right. Brian and Ryan, uh, I, episode 203, I think. I don't know what, but, uh, but we dropped normally on Tuesday mornings, but we waited because of the Cowboy game being played on a Tuesday of all things. So uh, to be sure and watch it. If you like it, share it, share it, share it, share it. Let people know about it. And maybe next, next week we'll have six viewers. All right. Okay. Sounds Ryan. Good. good to talk to you, Ryan Peterson. I'm Brian Houston. Thanks very much. We'll talk to you guys next week.